What's up, Dan and Ball? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Boronosaurus? <laughs> oh, man. How you been, man? I've been all right. I've been all right. Just trying to make it through. It's hard. It's so hard to come back to. Uh, yep. To work after having some time off. And, dude, let me tell you this real quick. Probably a little TMI. But I have ate my brains out for the past two weeks. So this is like day number two now. I'm kind of getting back to normal. I've had like cabbage and collard greens and salads and all that stuff. And, dude, it is like pushing everything out. Dude, I, I've had – we talked about this a little bit last week, but – I've been having this stomach virus, so I know what you're talking about. And and I mine came out of nowhere. I, as a matter of fact, I, college football is one of my favorite things to watch on TV. And I got sick New Year's Eve. I was right when the Georgia game started. That's when I got sick. And I went to bed, and I slept from about 8 o'clock New Year's Eve, which was a Saturday, until I woke up Sunday night about 7 o'clock to – get up and kind of stretch and I watched a little bit of TV from seven to maybe eight, went back to bed and I slept till Monday morning or Monday afternoon at like one o'clock. Oh my gosh. It was horrible. And what's funny is the, as we record this right now, tonight, Heather, she went to work and she thinks she has the same thing. So, Oh no. Yeah. Terrible. So terrible. She, she, she may be having an early night. Yeah, for sure. Well, with all that, you want to start building the bar? Let's do it. All right, man. So what have you brought to the table tonight? I've brought a bottle of Clan McGregor. Nice. Uh, it is super good. Super good. It as well is a scotch. I figured I would uh, piggyback on your coattail and bring another scotch to the table. And this one's a little bit different than yours. And I will get into that after a while. So I'll drink to that, buddy. And I'll drink to that. Okay. So this is episode 10 of Building a Bar. And episodes one through eight, we either put a bourbon or a corn whiskey or something of the sort on there. Episode nine, we put a scotch. Why should episode 10 be another scotch? Well, I think that um, not only is this a a very cheap um, scotch price-wise, but it has a very good flavor. And... Much like the one that we did last week where, you know, you're not supposed to drink it first because it's a very aggressive or offensive um, in a good way, as you put it. This one's a little bit different. This one is you can drink it anytime because it's not overly peated. Are you um, saying things that I bring to the table are offensive? I, what I'm I'm not trying to say anything other than, dude, it's 2023. Gotcha. <laughs> Come on. I got gotcha. I'm a little offended and probably everybody else is too. I would, I would, I would expect nothing less. Nothing okay. less. So, why should that bottle be on our bar? Well, the reason I think that it should be on the bar, though, is aside from all that, um, the name is pretty cool. The uh, you know I'm all about bottles, so like the um, like the label is kind of like the the McGregor Crest, and we'll get into the family name. You know who the family is here in a bit, but. You know, for your scotch drinkers that don't really know that they're scotch drinkers, but they don't like that heavy peat, this just have a complete different flavor. Okay, I got you. Actually, I a quick story. Um, when I first started drinking scotch, which for you and I, it was Lafroy, which is a very heavily peated. Um, that was mine, and I'm assuming it was your introduction to scotch. And I knew nothing about scotch. I knew nothing about the history of it or whatever. And I remember thinking that, like, this is scotch. Like, scotch tastes like medicine and whatever. But I happened to love it. And I just remember when I would meet people and we would start talking about scotch, as I would say, you know, a a good scotch is a peaty scotch. And, you know, many people would say, I hate peated scotches, but I like 
I like scotch, but I hated the I hate the peated scotches, and I, I would leave thinking like that's weird because scotch all scotch is peated scotch, but it's not. It's that's far that's the furthest from the truth, Daniel. It hey, you ain't just whistling Dixie. Nope. Here, pal. Here. So you well, this was actually my first introduction to scotch. This was. Um, this was yeah. I when I was stationed in Altus, I used to have a friend who I won't mention because I don't know if I have his permission to or not, but um, he would always drink bourbon and I would always drink scotch and Clan McGregor specifically. And uh, it's, it's peated, but not, it is not a heavily peated at all. And so it's almost got a sweet taste. And so this was mine. Well, the Made more scotch I drink, and and over the past year or so, I've really gotten into scotches, and even the the less peaty ones, like like what you're talking about, Clan McGregor, and even like Johnny Walkers and things like that, they're not heavily peated at all, but I can still taste some peat in there. So it's like my taste buds know kind of what to pull out. But all right, so so who makes this product? Who makes Clan McGregor? So Kenenvi Distillery is the maker of this. Now Kenenvi, which I don't mean any disrespect, I, I've never heard of Kenenvi before. And you're probably um, saying it wrong, but but that's okay. Well, yeah, and, and listen, this is your show, so if anybody gets sued, hopefully it's you. <laughs> Kenenvi is owned by William Grant and Sons, who also make Glenfinish. Okay. Uh, Blavini and Tuttletown. Okay. I, I, I do know the Glen Finch. Like I know who the, I know what that is, but I've never heard of Blavini and Tuttletown. Have you? I do think it it's sounds Bl- like Blavini. I hmm? think it's Blavini. I don't know. Blavini? But anyway, we're we're just we don't know. But it doesn't Blavini? matter. But, but yeah, I've actually I have heard of Glen Fittick before. Um and so yeah. So I, I'm I'm familiar with their product. So that is who makes this okay um so what's the mash bill the mash bill i never could find an exact mash bill for this however what i could find is that it was blended from scotches that have select grains from the highlands so i'll I'll, prior to our uh build a bar um i always thought that you only had two types of scotch highland and lowland um but now that i know that there's five of them because of yours last week um, and so uh, these are selected from Highland, Lowland, and Speyside. Okay, the okay. Speyside ones being, um, from what I remember, more of the coastal uh, flavors, flavors, I guess. Right. And so what, what this is, is that you're getting kind of a blend of all of Scotland with this because it's blended from okay. those types of scotches, hand-selected and blended from that profile. Other than say the just the flavor, um, what are there any other differences in that and like the scotch that we had last week, the Isla Scotch? Not that I know of. The only thing that I can think about um, mash bill wise is like so last last week uh, you were talking about Isla Storm, and that was a single malt scotch. And to kind mm-hmm. of recap on what that single malt was was a single distillery, right? So they're choosing from that specific distillery. This is a blended scotch, right? So I would be willing to bet a month's worth of your pay that the mash bill would still be the same about malted barley. However, the blending comes from, this is blended from several different distilleries. And it's not as heavily peated as well. So whereas whenever you taste that, you get that heavily peat, you don't get that with this. Well, I know, um, you know, kind of speaking of that, I know that that one of the things like the Isla, I mean, you know, it's it's an island. So, you know, a lot of that that saltiness comes from like the sea air. And, you know, when it's sitting there for, you know, 10 years, 12 years, 15, 18 years, whatever it is, it can't help that sea air can't help but impart something into this. Sure. And so I would assume like I know for a fact here in Kentucky, as far as bourbon is concerned, you could take the same mash bill, run it here in Northern Kentucky, where I am, send the same mash down to um, like centralish Kentucky, 
kind of where like Jim Beam and, and uh, Four Roses and all them are. And they could run it down there. You could send it to Southern Kentucky and run the same mash bill and get three different products. So I would assume that in Scotland, it's the same way. And so that's why you would blend from different areas because, um, you know, you you can pull from from the harshness of, say, an Isla Scotch and, and the sweetness of like a, you know, you know, one of the other Scott, one of the other uh, regions. So, mm-hmm. so I would assume that that plays a part in there. And I, I know we talked a little bit last week about the differences in bourbon and scotch, meaning here, you know, bourbon, they want to, they want to harp on the distiller. So the rock stars here are the distillers, the rock stars there are the blenders, the blenders. Yeah. And so not only would you as a blender have to be able to go into say, you know, a distillery like you know Lafroig or whatever and be able to pull from barrels there and, and make a, a solid product but you also to be a, a a master blender there you would have to be able to go to these different regions and and know that this taste from like the highlands would pair well with you know some of the space this barrel from the space side or this barrel from Isla or you know you would have to be able to, to blend that so so I would assume that you would have to be pretty much a master blender to 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 knock that out of the park. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And not only to knock that out of the park, but to be able to do it consistently for every single bottle. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and I will say, I mean, this what we're drinking tonight, I mean, this is probably my third or fourth time having it. And just like last week, you know, the the Isla Storm that we drank last week you know, that's probably my seventh or eighth bottle of that. And it's consistent every time. It's not like I, I have no idea what I'm tasting from, from bottle to bottle. So they do a, a fine job of it. Um, so we talked about, you know, this being a blended scotch and how that's different from single malt. Um, tell me about the label. So the label is it, it, it comes from Clan McGregor. It, it's, it's got their crest on there. Um, a little bit about the clan itself, though. The McGregor clan, they date back to the 14th century Scotland. Now, I, I'm not sure why. the the Which I know that like over there, like clans and families, and, and that's kind of like a, a forte type of thing. But I don't know why they chose this exact clan but mcgregor was among the first family to introduce bagpipes to to scotland so that could be potentially you know one of the reasons they chose it but they were a rough breed rough neck people man as a matter of fact in 1603 james the sixth outlawed the last name mcgregor and gregor so mcgregor are pretty much any deviation of that name deeming anyone who bears the name to be changed or punished by death so it was because they were extremely violent. Like this breed was such a violent group of people that their entire last name got banned outlawed. in Scotland. Yeah, that was outlaw. If you had it, you're going to be either you got two choices, change it or be punished by death. So that's, that's kind of another conversational piece as to why this needs to be. <laughs> yeah, bar. that's pretty cool, actually. Um, So does this bottle, I'll, think i know the answer but does this bottle have any other expressions no um clan mcgregor does not have any other expressions the only ones that could come close were the ones that i mentioned earlier the balvini and glenfiddich and tuttletown but i mean as far as the actual brand itself nope this is it okay um so what you said earlier when 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 I said why why would this should be on a bot on our bar you said it was cheap and uh so what would somebody pay for this or should somebody so according pay to the, well according to the booze app a fair price for this is twelve dollars and twenty one cents MSRP is eleven dollars and forty seven cents I pay, uh, I paid eleven bucks so. Yeah, I mean, you're having this this uh, bottle of scotch for eleven dollars. I mean, you can't be, and especially, man, like some of these products you'll buy for ten or eleven or nine bucks or whatever. You know, you're like, yeah. you think they would be terrible, but some of them will surprise the crap out of you. 
and I I may be wrong in saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. But I think that for the most part, blended scotches like this and like Johnny Walker and things like, I mean, Johnny Walker has different expressions. And so, I mean, you have some high end Johnny Walkers, like a Johnny Walker blue, for instance, but I think like kind of the flagship Johnny Walker and, and most of these blended uh, scotches are a little bit cheaper than like a single malt scotch anyway. So, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that that's a pretty decent price for that. Um, how hard is this bottle to find? Bottle this this bottle is easy, man. This was uh again, this was my drink when I was stationed in Oklahoma. Um, I re-engaged with it in Missouri uh, when I was stationed there. I'm stationed now down here in Arkansas. It's down here everywhere. Um, I've drank it whenever mom and dad lived in Mississippi. I've drank it. I've seen it in Tennessee. So I mean, this is a pretty this is a very regular expression. Okay, you can find it anywhere. Um, all right, so let's get to the good stuff. So what yeah. should the drinker be tasting? What do you taste whenever? Okay. You... So on the first nose, it's ethanol with a slight honey smell. You know what I mean? Almost like a, have you ever been around anybody that has bees? Yeah. You and, know how that And smells? bees knees. And, and bees knees yeah so like ain't bees knees or are we talking something completely different something different okay sorry i didn't mean to trample on your hand like that. you know how the bees knees smell like in springtime yeah it smells like ethanol with a slight like spring honey smell and as weird as it's gonna sound it smells like and at the very first taste It tastes like a really good moonshine. I know that sounds crazy, but it tastes like a really good moonshine. Um, in the middle, it has a sweet toasted. Um, I, I can really can't explain it other than just like a sweet toasted middle. And then the back end is like a, a butter toffee. Mm -hmm. I know there's a smorgasbord of different, but I think that that's where the importance of that blending comes from you're able to taste everything through that, through that beginning. I mean, it's that honey, then it goes into that really good moonshine, which I guess probably could be imparted from the ethanol. Um, and then the, the, the toasted middle to the butter toffee, which butter toffee. I don't know if maybe that's some of that. Well, let me kind of backtrack for a minute here, because I think that maybe some of the butter toffee profile that we get, for those that don't know, whenever a barrel gets used up at, say, like Buffalo Trace or Jack Daniels, and a lot of times those barrels get shipped off to Scotland or mm -hmm. Ireland, and they're reused, right? So what they do with them there is they pretty much rechar them, and then they barrel them there. Um, and so you're also picking up some of those flavors from Buffalo Trace or yeah. Jack Daniels or, you know what I mean? And so what happens is, um, and another little tidbit is that, you know, like in Kentucky, you know, it's, it's A's for three years or four years. Well, Kentucky has four different seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. Scotland pretty much it's cold and, and dreary yep. all year round. So whenever they age their stuff for 12 years, that's basically the equivalent of our three years because they're always cool and damp and rainy mm -hmm. and gloomy. Um, so I think the reason that maybe you have like a bourbon barrel will go over there and it's aged in that for 12 years, you're picking up some of that butter and toffee, the same stuff you would pick up in a bourbon barrel. Yeah. Um, on, kind of on a side note, I, I thought it was kind of cool. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching a documentary because if you know me, you know, I'm into like, I like to film and I like to film bourbon stuff and I like to watch other people's films about bourbon and whatever. But I was watching this film about Jack Daniels the other day and uh, they actually interviewed a guy from Scotland and um, they, in the documentary, I think they took a barrel and, and watched like they dumped it and they followed it over to Scotland and, and 
they put some stuff in there. But anyway, they tasted some stuff out of it and they asked the guy, um, did, did he prefer barrels that weren't, you know, previously aged the bourbon? And he, the guy said, no, if it weren't for the bourbon industry, like the, the, the scotch industry would be suffering right now because the wood over there is not the same as the wood over here. And so I just thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was neat that, you know, in, in some essence, in, in some kind of realm we're competing, you know, scotch is always competing with bourbon and always competing, but in some, in some degree or whatever, it's like they're partners on, you know, it's like they, they feed off each other. It's a brotherhood. So Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool. They call us the ungrateful Yanks. Yeah, for sure. I All like right, it. Man, so, uh, do you have anything else you want to say about this? You know, I, I think we're good to go. I think that uh, I think we can agree. I, I vote we don't put this on the bar. We don't put it on the. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I agree, man. This this goes on the bar, and and uh, I think. You know, we talked a little bit last week about the reason we put that scotch on there is it's starting to round our bar out and give us some variety. And and I do think that, you know, adding some scotches on there and, and even within scotches, just like we could say within bourbon, there's, you know, there's a difference in, you know, there's a difference in Jim Beam and, and Wild Turkey. And there's a difference in, you know, name it craft bourbon and you know some of the heritage brands and i know you're making faces when i'm not <laughs> uh, but you know so scotch is the same way so it, it's not only are we broadening our horizons with scotches but then we're we're even within the category of scotch we're putting different scotches on there so you're an idiot ed <laughs> i love you but i cheers to that and i think this needs to be on there here's here all right, man. Uh, I guess until next week, uh, stay dry, stay warm, stay unsick, stay. What else? Um, stay fruitful. Stay fruitful. Do I need to stay fruitful? Stay Hit fruitful. Yes. And stay I all of those. And stay froggy. I love frogs. You have no idea. <laughs> All right, man. I'll holler at you next week, buddy. All uh, right. Love you. Love you, man. If you like what you heard tonight, check us out on these social media platforms. Just search for My Journey Through the American Spirits. Also, check us out on our new website, 